Hassan Giordano with the Daily Dose, and we're joined by the 44th District Delegate, Mr. Keith Haynes. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm just right. Great, 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 great. 140th legislative session, just getting started two weeks in. What do you uh, foresee as the hot topics that need to really be addressed during this session? Well, obviously for Baltimore City, the, the number one priority is uh, funding for new schools in Baltimore City. Uh, we have this uh, ambitious agenda to, um, you probably have heard about from the school system and from the mayor's office uh, and the city delegation, pushing to change the funding structure so that we're able to build new schools, state-of-the-art uh, schools, and uh, bring uh, our existing schools and renovate them to 21st century standards so that we have the facilities that our students need to, uh, to become the, the great uh, students that they are. And so, with that, that's the number one priority. Uh, I sponsored that legislation last year. We'll be working on it again this year. Uh, we uh, are hopeful that uh, we're able to make some headway in getting that legislation passed. Uh, on uh, other issues, uh, obviously, uh, hot topics will uh, repeal the death penalty. Working very hard on trying to uh, get the death penalty repealed, along with uh, another hot topic, which is uh, sort of the big news across the country is revisiting the gun legislation. So uh, those are some of the big social issues and the educational issues. Obviously I'm on the uh, appropriations committee so uh, we have the budget first this year so we're starting that process and looking at um, uh, how we can continue to keep the funding that's in place that the government has submitted. Well, we're looking good. We have no real tax increases in terms of the governor's proposal at least in legislative agendas. But the transportation funding kind of seems if the Senate President looks to be introducing a more regional type of thing. Like you said, you're on appropriations. How is that going to play out, do you see? Do we have a better chance regional, or should we keep it on the statewide level? Or? Well, I think, um, first of all, I think there are two things you have to look at. Number one, um, the need for transportation funding. Mm -hmm. Uh, the need is there. there are some of the counties outside the city of Baltimore, um, uh, more regionally speaking, and some of the outlying areas uh, have articulated a real need for new funding for uh, roads and bridges. Um, obviously, Baltimore is treated a little bit differently as funding is concerned because we take care of our own transportation uh, uh, issues in the city. So uh, as we sort of move down that line um, and, we, and, we, and we look at that issue, I think the one key thing you have to keep in mind is whether it involves new taxes or not. Right. And that's, uh, that's a tough sell for a lot of people in some areas. And a lot of people are concerned with, and this is legislation that's been thrown around, the Republicans have introduced it a few years in a row, mm -hmm. is the transportation fund can be rated. It's like a general fund. How do we then, number one, start targeting tax increases to be targeted to education, transportation, and actually have them kept there as opposed to being a general fund? Is there ways around that? Well, there's always a way. <laughs> there's always a way. But the one thing I will say is, is this. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to sort of put things in a lockbox, so to speak, uh, when times are good. But you do have to have that flexibility when times are bad to make sure that you're protecting the interests of the state while also uh, protecting the citizens of the state. Uh, so there has to be a balanced approach. And so to the extent that you may have to use funds from one uh, funding source in order to offset uh, layoffs of state workers, uh, it's a balanced approach. So that's why sometimes you do need to have that flexibility. Hopefully. The, 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 the great equalizer to all of this is that we have a great economy which will continue to, to grow. People go back to work, tax revenue continues to increase, and so we can do more of what we have. And we just got out of a, of a hearing with DBED who basically said we've regained 80% of the jobs that we lost from 20, mm -hmm. 2010. Maryland is on the fast track of doing a lot of things mm -hmm. business-wise. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about the school system, even localities like Baltimore County that's right next door, Democrats are questioning why do we give this type of leverage to Baltimore City and this type of investment of over 20 years in their school system when we have a locality that lost $58 million years ago um, when Governor O'Malley was then the mayor of the city of Baltimore. 
how do we begin to approach the 71 votes in the House and 24 in other localities who look at Baltimore City and say, why are you special? Well, I think you have to keep in mind uh, a couple of things. When you talk about Baltimore City and Baltimore City school facilities, Baltimore has the oldest stock of school facilities in the state. Uh, I always like to point out the number 1875. I have a school in my district eight, that, was, that was built in 1875, and it has been in continuous use since then. Um, we can do better than that. Um, most of the schools in the city are on the verge of 70 years plus old. Uh, no heat, no air conditioning, uh, nah, not really ADA compliant, and so the need is greater. And so when we look at how we try to meet the needs of one jurisdiction, it's about um, taking care of the entire state. And I always like to say that a rising tide raises all ships. Um, it may be us this time with this particular issue, but somewhere down the line it's going to be another jurisdiction with another, another issue where we're going to have to come together to make sure that those needs are met as well. So it's not about Baltimore being special, it's that with this particular issue we have the greatest need to make sure that our students are learning in those 21st century facilities that other jurisdictions are able to offer their students. And so that's why we have to work collab collaboratively and collectively to try to address this issue because in a few years it'll be another issue for someone else that we have to join on a large scale like that to make sure those citizens in that area are needs are met as well. And the governor says we are one Maryland. One Maryland. Right. There it is. There it <laughs> um, is. Switching from governing to politics, you were actually redrawn out of your district um, by the latest redistricting map. Is there anything you want to, I mean, what, 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 do, do we have any plans yet for 2014? It's right around the corner. We uh, are in we the moved the primary week. to June now. So. We are in the second week of uh, session here, right. and my focus is making sure that I do my job as best I can, especially in the Appropriations Committee, making sure that Baltimore uh, is a great beneficiary of, um, of, of funding in the budget, that we uh, continue to make sure that all our needs are met. Uh, as best as we possibly can in this budgetary cycle. We're still coming out of a rough economic time. And so um, that's, that's where the focus is. I always say if, you, if you're able to do your job and do the best you can, and hopefully everything else takes care of itself. And you absolutely have done your job every year you've been up here. Thank, thank you, so you very much. much. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more.